Welcome to the OFX Podcast. I'm Dave Claxton, and along with me, as always, is our galloping gal of great speed, <laughs> Bethany McChesney. How you doing, Beth? I'm good. I don't feel so galloping with great speed lately, though. <laughs> Why not? What's wrong? Oh, I just feel like it's been a lot tougher coming back from this injury than I anticipated, but it's coming. I'm just being very impatient. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? It, I mean, that's kind of worked out that we um we kind of keep getting shut down. I know. Wait, wait, wait. Before we go to that, this episode is brought to you by Duo Namic. <laughs> and I finally got my thing, and I'm all set up, and I've been doing some awesome stuff. It's going really well. Um, I'm going to make some videos. I just haven't been happy with how they've turned out yet. Mm -hmm. With the rings. Well, yeah, part of that is because um, just, again, uh, silly little things like lighting and I'd get the video together. I'm like, oh, that didn't work right and it didn't look good. Uh, so I'm working yeah. all out. But yes, mm -hmm. Duonamics, I'm really enjoying it. And uh, check it out. Go to the web page, buy one, support them, support us. It'd be fantastic. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you suck. You can't run anymore. What's wrong? No, I can run. <laughs> I just feel like fitness is coming back slower. I can say that. <laughs> It's, I also find it very hard to train um, for high rocks and running fast just because I have to, I really have to push the weights in order to be strong enough to do high rocks. And then that just kind of takes away from the running. So it's just, and then when running is still, I'm still building it back. It's just been a little bit of a, yeah, kerfuffling, trying to get back into shape. <laughs> I, I get it too. Like I've been, I've been getting stronger. I feel strong. I feel more than strong enough now. Mm -hmm. Um, but when I do run, and this could be partly because of the COVID thing, but my heart rate is up higher than I'd expect it yeah, and see, things like that. Yeah, this weekend, the same thing with me. And I feel like, so I feel like I'm over COVID, but my heart rate still gets so high. So maybe it still is that too. I don't know. We'll see. But uh, so anyway, High Rocks Boston is out. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, it's official. I cannot do New York. I can't make that happen in time. Yeah, um, yeah it's good. Too quick planning that kind of a trip in two weeks for, yeah, um, especially with even the restrictions. Has did Boston release a a postponement date? Not to my knowledge, no. We don't have a postponement date yet, uh, other than the fall is what they said. Okay. So, who knows? But the tough thing about like fall is so busy. Well, and you're talking championship OCR seasons too. That's exactly right. Championship OCR season. So it's, it's super busy time for a lot of their clientele, but you know, we'll see. I mean, it, it's all just going to depend when it, when it happens, what's going on, all that stuff. And we'll go from there. Yeah. And um, obviously that'll be after world championships too. So that'll be a new qualifier for the 2023 championships. Right. Um, so. Yeah. so then High Rocks just has New York and then what else before Worlds? Uh, well, Munich actually is this weekend. Okay. So, and that's, here's the thing. I, and I've been thinking about this and I wasn't going to talk about this with you, but you know, like to qualify for worlds for high rocks, it's the, you know, top, I believe 15 times, right. Which is really kind of skewed because we know the times from Europe are usually so much better, which I know I say that. And then you look in Hunter and, and Kent have like the fastest times. But we know that it is easier there. Everybody who's gone from both sides says it's easier there. Yeah. Um, it makes it a bit difficult, and also the setups there. I don't know. I don't. I don't know how otherwise I would do the qualifying system. But I'm not sure I like that one for this. Mm -hmm. Like, well, I mean, they're just still trying to figure this out too. So mm -hmm. it makes the most sense if you consider everything's created equal. Like, I don't know if the organizers would say it's easier. I think it's the participants who have claimed that it's easier. So mm -hmm. I think they're just basically assuming it's as standard as possible. Yeah. And I, I think what's going to end up happening anyway is you're only going to have so many from Europe that will be willing to travel anyway. So, you know. Yeah. You and know. these get these spots get knocked down then. So if someone doesn't take a spot, it goes to the next person. I think so. I don't want to say that 100%. I do know 100% that that is the case for DECA. I don't know 100% for High Rocks, but I believe so. I would say like okay. like 80%. Yeah, well, you want to fill that heat. 
Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I would think 80%. And the, but my question for that, it becomes when do they need to, to know by, right? Like when do they, because obviously if you're number 16, you want to get notification as soon as possible. Right. You, you can jump in. So we'll yeah. dig into that a bit and we'll see if we can figure that out. Um, either way, um, and there's still, sorry, and there's still Dallas as well. There's Dallas as well to happen. Okay. Okay, and, so people and have that, a few opportunities. Too. That's something like I'm, I, I've, I've been getting some uh, coercion from others who are looking into flights for me as to what it costs. And apparently it's about 300 bucks to fly to Dallas from yeah. Toronto. So, you know, we, we'll consider, we'll see what's, what's <laughs> there. So we will see if I'm going to make it or not. It's up in the air. I'm going to look at it. I'm going to say it's not very likely, but at the same time, it's definitely worth looking into. Mm-hmm. I mean, like if I could get some cheap accommodations or you know crash on a couch or something like that eh, maybe not too bad yeah so i've never been to texas (laughs) so i I don't know if you want to talk about this or not but there was you were you were possibly having a pivot of plans for for high rocks boston is that going to happen or um i well i just don't know so New York was considered, um, and then I looked into Denver for DecaFit, and then um, also Slow, Spartan, so there was kind of, but I just, the traveling, Boston was much more affordable, and then both of those two options, again, um, the travel was going to be about double, and I just think at this point, still coming back to fitness, I'm not really ready to put that much money out when I'm still just like getting back into shape if I was and especially for high rocks like if I was in high rocks shape and I was a high rocks athlete I might consider I do it more for fun for something in the off season so I don't know if I'm willing to put that out for New York um yeah and like when I do DECA I want to really give it a good go and um yeah I'm probably just not ready for Denver right now Right. that's that's understood Den- denver like we say is going to be a huge field that'll be deadly actually you know the i just thought of this. this is the good thing about this now with high rocks boston canceled if they do a good video of deca in denver we'll be able to watch it and right. see it and so yeah so now that we're available to watch there's more encouragement for yancy to do a video because <laughs> yeah. i think that's what was holding him back <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> So a couple other things. I don't know if you saw this. Sam Briggs, right before the Open, announces her retirement after this year. No. So she's going to do one more year? This year this is her last year of competition. Oh, I'm sad, but I, I get it. And she's not going to st- switch down to age group. I didn't see anything. She just said this is her last year competing. Um, yeah. I don't know. She's like my dream bucket list guest. Like, I, I really yeah. should. I would love to interview Sam. She's just so cool. And uh, yeah, yeah. I think maybe we must start trying to pull some strings and see if I can try to figure out a way to make that happen. I don't know if it'll ever work, but I would love to. Yeah. So if anyone wants to tell Sam, <laughs> it would be a dream of ours to, to interview her. Yeah. I'm a big but, fan of Sam Briggs, actually. I read her book, too. Oh, really? Yeah. I would it's like to start that. your engines. Yeah, it's about her life coming into CrossFit, so... Her injury history, if you're someone who struggles with injuries and feeling a little bit of what was me, you should read Sam Briggs' book because what she's gone through is just phenomenal and to still be doing it. So when I hear she's retiring, I'm like, you know, maybe maybe it's time she gives her body a little bit of a break because she's been doing this a long time and she's been in high-level sports her entire life. So good for her. I will have to borrow that from you. I don't read a lot of books, but that one I would read. Mm-hmm. And and yeah, she's just she's just amazing. She's just a machine. Um, I'm sure she's going to end up doing something. She will not just become stationary. Oh, no. it just no. it, she just maybe it doesn't seem like her character. <laughs> maybe maybe she'll put a little more into a Hyrox or a hybrid racing of some kind. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah, it's I mean, a little bit less. It's a little bit less intensive on the joints, right, than doing those CrossFit movements. So yeah, well, I mean, she did great at that uh, Elite Twelve for the Hyrox. Yeah, you yeah. know, I mean, yes, okay. You look at it; she came fourth, but that was a good group, and that was her first time ever doing one, and she was not training for that. That was like on a whim. Here I am, Sam Briggs, going to give this a shot. Yeah, did so, 100 wall walls unbroken. Yeah, I mean, just <laughs> unreal. I love her. Um, so that's crazy. Now, 
I'm going to throw something out there. This may be something and it may be nothing. All right. But this was kind of brought to my attention and like I looked at it and it was like, so if you look on the Spartan website right now, Yokohama Tire is not listed as a sponsor when they have their little sponsor list and there's no tire flip in Jacksonville or Arizona. Now tire flips, not always everywhere, but it's always at Jacksonville and that's supposed to be their U S national series race. So I'm like, is it something? Is it nothing? I don't know. And it's typically been a game changer in the men's race and in Jacksonville, it really shook it's, things up before. Yeah. Especially because of the, uh, the ground, right. Trying to get your fingers yeah. underneath in the sloppy, I don't know if it's like some kind of dewy condition or whatever it is, yeah. but Jacksonville grease tires. It's just like, but so I, mean, I thought I saw a screenshot of um, the sponsors list and I thought it was on there. It is, but it's not, if you go on the website, it's not on the website. And yeah. So, I mean, like I said, it could be nothing. It could be an oversight, but you know, throwing out rumors and innuendos. There you go. Run with it. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It's possible. I kind of would be disappointed because I like I like I wanted the tire flip to come here. I, that's something I want yeah. more of. I want I want to see more pure strength yeah. put into some of these. Well, and like we've talked to race organizers too. It's the heaviest obstacle to travel around with. Very. So it could be on the chopping block just because of travel expenses, gas prices. <laughs> Oh yeah, storage fees very expensive. To, to yeah. you think about it, that it takes up the most room. It can't be collapsed and condensed down. It, and they're expensive. Well, Yokohama gives them to free, but they're heavy, and that's you know yeah. that's transportation. And so, yeah, maybe who knows? We'll see. That's uh, something. And I have one more thing that I just saw that is not related to anything we normally talk about. Okay. No more license plate stickers in Ontario. What? Yeah. So you don't have to renew them every year. You do, but it's free. What? Yeah. That's amazing. And you're going to get the two years you just paid, the last two years, you're going to get refunded that money. So it's $120 a year. Yeah. So it's 240 bucks back. And then you don't have to renew your sticker. You do, apparently, you do renew your stickers, but it is free to do. Yeah. Oh, that's your flight to Dallas. But that is my flight to Dallas if it comes in time. Absolutely. I can explain that to Riley that way. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and we don't get into this stuff much, much, but you know what I think it is? I think desperation play by Doug Ford to hopefully endear himself to the people again, because obviously he's not very popular right now. Oh, I don't think that's going to change anyone's mind. No, neither do I. But hey, I'll take the money. And uh, I always hated renewing my sticker because it's annoying as hell. Yeah, and I always forget. All right, that's all I got for you and I right now, but we're going to move on to the interview section where um, we have landed an amazing athlete, none other than the Terra Nova, or Terra Jackson. <laughs> I have to apologize right away because um, I was supposed to have dinner with you and Heather in, in Chicago, and I didn't get to make it, and I was really sad. I heard you got the COVID. I did that morning. Like seriously, I was 4 a.m. I was getting ready to drive. I had the car, the van was warming up. Literally You're, had started the van. Are you in Canada? Yeah. Yeah. So you were worried about not getting back. Cause you know, you don't have COVID if you don't get tested. That's right, exactly. <laughs> 100%. Yeah, I was. My plan was uh, take the test drive down take another test for me to get back in without having seen anybody in that way i'd be sure but yeah sure enough i had literally started the car finished breakfast and um uh, bam screwed done well and dave didn't even really have symptoms no yeah that's what i was like trying to stay like i'm a personal trainer so i was trying to like limit my exposure to people before chicago but i was like i just i'm not i mean i don't test usually before i travel anyways but i was like i don't know <laughs> i was like so worried about getting covid before i came because you know everybody's getting it now but i had just gotten the booster like right before christmas but so many people are still getting it even vaccinated so yeah but yeah, yeah i don't i don't think you can hide it just is what it is well you like you said you didn't have any symptoms so no. like unless you were just like preemptively testing before travel like I wouldn't imagine many uh, 
many people in the U.S. were doing that because there's like really not any kind of regulations. And I, I know um, before they had said you had to be vaccinated to go to Chicago, and then like mm-hmm. they were I, the uh, you, the the Iraq guy came out and was like, "Oh yeah, if you're a spectator, there's like tests on site or something like that." I was like, "Oh, okay." I'm pretty sure a lot of people didn't go because they were like, "Yeah, I vaccinated." Don't, I don't know what the strict rule was. That. I don't know if they, because I mean, it was all due to whatever Chicago, you know, the government ra- wanted, right? So I don't know if that got switched from vaccinated to proof of negative test to. So I don't know how that went. It could have been that, because, but I think you're right. If it was changed, they probably should have advertised that a bit because. Well, I saw it on like a, um, like on one of the stories and I was like, oh, I didn't know that. I was already vaccinated, so it didn't really matter for me. But I know a lot of people didn't come because they thought that they had to be vaccinated. Mm -hmm. But I mean, you know, the rules are just changing so like quickly. It could have been like a change in like Chicago's rules, like at the last minute. I mean, I know like all the other like everything's pretty much opening back up now. I was kind of bummed that Boston was canceled because I think that they're just starting to open stuff back up again. Weren't you going to set the record in Boston for for doubles? Uh, no, me and Dylan are going to do it in New York. Oh, see, that's better. It's even quicker. You can set the record there. Yeah, and then I'd already actually decided not to go to Boston because I'm going to go to Maastricht for the European Championships. Oh. Uh, I was like, well, I wasn't going to go anyways, but I know I had a couple clients that were going to go and they're kind of bummed that it got canceled, but maybe then I could hit it in the fall. Yeah. Yeah. Us too. We're, 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 we're toasted out of there too. Do they have high rocks in Canada or no, not yet. Not yet. I saw a guess that they're like, I mean, they're coming to like a lot of different places next year. I saw that they might have a location in the middle East and, um i don't know there was a big list and i was like oh wow they're really like expanding well, they originally for 2020 had it had slated a, a toronto one and then oh. pre-covid that got switched wasn't it to new york yeah it did get canceled but yeah pre-covid i think they they're having issues with just getting the numbers i think so too mm-hmm. that's i think probably with boston because boston's so strict i know i was mad because i well, I decided not to go, but I had booked my flight, and I was like, I'm not going to book my flight more than four weeks out, because I know that if they're going to cancel it, it'll be less than, it'll be more than four weeks. But it was like a hundred bucks, and I was like, well, it's not going to get any cheaper, so I might as well go ahead and book it now. So, but this it is what it is. Pisses me off about the States. Seriously. Like, flights are? A hundred bucks. I, we, can't, we can't get on a bus and drive anywhere for a hundred bucks. I got it. My ticket. The reason I'm going to Maastricht is I got a ticket to Amsterdam for like four hundred dollars. <laughs> That's just wacko. I can't. We like seriously. So when we went out to when we went to Red Deer, what was it like three fifty? Yeah, somewhere around there, and like it's a three four hour flight. It's no border flight. crossing. The alert on, so it tells you like when the flights get cheap. They just don't really get that cheap here. <laughs> no, it just doesn't happen. Oh, no. No. I know I was looking at Vegas, and the flights to Vegas are, like, almost $600. So I'm not sure, like, why that's so expensive. Like, my flight to New York and Amsterdam together is not even $600. So I'm like, the heck? But Vegas hopefully it'll be the only place we can fly cheap. Yeah. Really? Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I need to drive somewhere to fly to Vegas because I, I live in Wilmington, North Carolina. So it's pretty small uh, airport, like six terminals. So sometimes it's really cheap to fly out. And then sometimes it's like crazy expensive. But oh. by the way, this is Tara Jackson. Oh. <laughs> we already did the intro stuff earlier, so we're good. Just keep rolling. Yeah. <laughs> so what race is next you guys? Well, Are you- York or uh, for me it's a low it's a Canadian one uh will be uh, RX1 which is a hybrid race in Quebec um actually again we we talk about it quite quite a bit and uh super fun a lot of you know similar to where you're going to have your functional fitness stations and a lot of running but it's more trail running it's outside and it changes every time so, so. Oh. 
Cool. But it's, it's super kind of, cool. Maybe Heather told you about Legends of the Fall. Definitely um, bucket list. Yeah, it, it's a really cool race, man. I was on Sean Clayton's team and we won lat this past year. Um, we beat Rich Froning, so that was kind of cool. <laughs> you get that like tattooed on your ribs or something? I beat Rich Froning. Yeah, <laughs> he, would... not very friendly to us after after the race. <laughs> I, I got my picture with him before though, so it, it was okay. He's like a Man Crush Monday kind of kind of athlete. <laughs> yeah. I, he's, a, he's a pretty competitive dude from what I can see, and uh, I'm not surprised. I, I could see him okay. being happy. Taking many hands after I have a bad race either, so I'm not I'm not judging him for it. <laughs> I left pretty fast after Chicago. People were probably like, where did she go? I'm like, just not a good day. <laughs> but So why don't we start uh, and, and go back a bit. Like, where did your kind of athletic career start? Like, uh, you were uh, a marathoner or running? Um, so I've been competitively running since, uh, I guess like sixth grade. And I, then I ran in college at UNC Wilmington. Um, and then after I got a out of college, I got into Spartan racing, um, for about, I guess since like 2012. So I was like doing it started and now, uh, people don't miss three obstacles anymore. <laughs> so I, I was always been fast enough to like make that up. But now it's just like you miss one obstacle, you're kind of you're kind of out of it. So you kind of a lot more competitive with with actual runners getting into the sport, uh, like people like Nicole who ran competitively in college, and um, before I think it was more like people who they were athletic and they weren't so much runners, but they like to do the obstacles. Now it's just like. It's really just a runner's sport um, now. There's not a lot. I mean, everything's like super light. The buckets are really light. So if you're not fast, it's just like there's there's not much of a race there. Maybe if you do Savage, like the obstacles are a little bit more technical. So you could maybe get a pure runner if they can't complete some of the obstacles. But with Spartan Race, it's just like a foot race now. Absolutely. You hit the nail on the head. So because of that you did the, the i guess was it high rocks was the first hybrid race you heard about was that where you took the pivot there um so i actually started with doing deca fit um so i i did like three of those last year and um i really love yancey he's like a champion for the sport and he's just like a cool guy to be around so him and jared are like number one hype men so they make really like fun race so if y'all ever get a chance to go to a deca fit those are a lot of fun um i just actually did a deca mile this weekend in texas with uh chris and um those are fun too because you they're like all over like i don't know if they have them in canada but like they have them everywhere there's like probably hundreds of them per year and they're like based out of local gyms so um, you can find ones that are a lot closer to home versus like having to drive six or seven hours to go race. So obviously I got to watch the, you guys do that live because of the Dylan streaming and stuff. And it was an awesome race. You and Chris were really throwing down, but she's on quite a tear. Like the, the, the you know, I mean, you've, you've put up, you've put up what a, a top five deck of time overall. I'm not sure exactly where it sits between last yeah. year's and this year's for a deck of fit. So. Yeah, I think I'm sitting at fourth right now. Yeah. But that was on the turf course, too. So I'm oh. excited to, like, run one that is on. The problem is, unlike Chris, I have to train specifically for exactly what I'm doing. So, like, I noticed when I was going into DecaFit, all I've been doing is high rocks. So I don't know if you saw us coming into the box stepovers, but I think I had, like, three or four on her. Mm -hmm. And she left, like, two or three ahead of me. Like, I'm just really slow if I don't, like like do those like three or four times a week because the coordination is not there for me <laughs> so i i really have to get specific with my training when i'm trying to like after high rocks world championships i'll probably go back to training for deca for the fall because the deca world championships will be in um november so i'll get a little more specific um for that but it was definitely a lot less painful than high rocks so that <laughs> that was fun I think the deck of miles is my favorite 
favorite distance. That would be the one that I would love to do the most, just that 160 sprint in between. And it's just it seems like one of those ones you just go all out and, mm-hmm. you know, hold on as best you can. Yeah. It's, and it's like a 5k, like it doesn't hurt until like the very end. Like you, like, you're like, oh, it's like fun for like 15 minutes. And then you have like five minutes of where you're like, oh, this really sucks. And then, then you're yeah, done. Over. Yeah. yeah. High rocks, it's like, uh, you get to about the burpees and you're like, man, this is really hard. And then you got like half a race to go. <laughs> so, but it's just interesting, like training the, the amount, like you can like change up your training to get like more specific for these events. I like that. It's the same thing every single time, like mm-hmm. the variability of the races, like some people like Savage because the race changes every time or, they have different obstacles or different rigs. So I don't like that. Every I've, I've went to a Savage like four times and I'll miss one obstacle and I'll train specifically for that obstacle. And then the next race I'll get it and they'll add something else and then I'll fail that. And I'm just like, I'm done with this Savage race. <laughs> so, but some people, uh, the series now is going to be really big. So I, I think Chris is probably going to, probably going to take the series this year. Um, I think, it, I don't know of anybody that could really compete with her unless maybe Nicole comes back. So I was thinking Nicole might step into that a bit. I'm not sure what her plans are, but I heard that she had mentioned possibly doing the Savage one as well. But I guess that will all depend on schedules and whatnot. But that would be a good well, race, though. I would still like to see that. I don't think her knee is like 100% yet. So, um, I mean, she's going to need the speed. Savage, their courses are usually not very technical either so like you really have to have the foot speed on those um Lindsay maybe I mean I guess if Lindsay wanted to step into doing some savage races obviously she's a she's a ringer but there's not many people that I think that are on the level of like Chris as far as like speed and obstacle proficiency so it'll be interesting to watch the series Here's the thing, though, I heard was that Savage Series 2, though, is, and I, I'm not sure I really like this, and uh, is they might make the rig a little bit easier. And oh. I'm like, that's kind of getting away from who you are, I think, a little bit. And I don't, I don't know. I, I think I'd just stay consistent with what they've been doing. Yeah, I mean, they're, like, known for their innovation and, like, their tough obstacles. I feel like they would get a lot of backlash because Spartan gets a lot of backlash and they're notoriously they're notorious for not having like hard obstacles and like not having a lot of innovation like like their big innovation is like pipe layer or helix or whatever um obstacles that I'm not like opposed to because you know (laughs) you can't really fail them you can't fail them well I don't know now I have helix we've seen it happen yeah I know (laughs) yeah um but I, I don't know. I don't see, like, I mean, I feel like, like you said, that's who Savage is, so I don't think they're going to be, like, making their obstacles easier. I think the lache, though, that they have is just, like, dangerous. Like, if it's wet, I just could see somebody, like, dislocating their shoulder or, like, that kind of obstacle being, like, I don't know, an orthopedic nightmare. Yeah, so, I mean, personally for me they can put in as many laches as they want make them bigger make them further i'm okay with that that'll be great and, and that way i can just waddle my way through the whole course and finish the lache and, and, and do well so i'm okay with that but yeah i know i'm more worried not so much when you say about wet not so much about that about slips and falls that people can take off them because there's generally not a lot of padding under their rig and in a case no. like that if you're completely horizontal and you you know you let go you slip that's a you know that's a good spinal tap yeah, and I've, I've seen some people, like, dislocate elbow, like, battle frog days. I've seen some people, you know, get carted off because the rigs are just, like, they're tough and you push yourself maybe past. But, I mean, I guess it's, that's what it's about. I mean, it's it's a sport, so people are going to get hurt. Um, but, I don't know, I'm interested to see. I'm, I'm registered for the Go Ruck games, and I know Savage is, like, a part of that. So, I don't know. <laughs> I hope that they have maybe that last, like very last. So maybe I can qualify for the on the first day for the second day, and then then just like try to survive the second day's obstacles because that's oh, not there's my an jam. elimination process to it. Yeah. So the first day, um, I think they're supposed to start out with fifty people, 
Um, I don't know how many people that they have right now, because I think the first round of people was like 20, but I think I've seen some other people announce that they're going. So, um, but by the second day, it's supposed to only be eight people. Oh, wow. So it'll be a big cut from the first day to the second day. Um, but I'm hoping that they're going to release the, um, the workouts beforehand because I know it's only three weeks before Vegas and I've heard like, oh, it could be like a 15 mile rough. And then I'm just like, sounds like pretty, I don't, I don't know if I'm like going to be into like who can walk the fastest for like 15 miles. Um, so I might make a decision on that because I don't want to like affect Vegas. That's like my A race for this year. I don't think it's going to be that long a ruck is my understanding. Actually, from when Matt talked to the guy running it, all they would say is more than a mile. <laughs> so, but I don't think it's going to be that long a ruck. I think, I think again, they're going to try to keep it a little more, let's call it audience friendly and a little more, you know, so that, and a little more entertaining. So I don't, ex I don't expect, I could be way off. I could be wrong. That's just the impression I got. I don't want to promise anything there, but. I'm hoping like a TMX style, like, um, <laughs> the like, magic word. <laughs> uh, that, that would be the most ideal. Um, maybe not for competition for me to compete, but like, just as, so you don't, don't like beat your body down, um, so much. Like, I know that's what's amazing in like this sport. Some of these, some of these girls and guys, like they'll, run like an ultra beast and then they'll like turn around the next day and run a sprint or something. I'm like, I run the beast and I need to like chill out for a couple of days because everything hurts. And I just, and I'm not, I'm 30, so I'm not like super old or anything, but I, I don't see how, like some people are just like have this great ability to like turn around the next day and still perform at such a high level. So that's going to come into effect too. Like if you're competing two days in a row at the Skorot games, how much they, like beat you down the first day and then you have to turn around and race again the next day. Uh, that, that recovery is definitely something that, you know, just a, an ability that some people have that is impressive. I, I personally don't possess it. <laughs> no. Like if somebody told me to turn around and do high rocks the next day after a high rocks, I'd be like, no. <laughs> Only thing I want to do is like lay in bed for like a whole day. Cause I am so sore, but some people, like, um, I think, I don't know, there was, like, no, we did a Decafit, and I think uh, Chris went around the next day, and, uh, no, she did the Ultra Beast in Dallas, and then turned around the next day and did Iron Man. Whoa. It's a good warm-up. Good warm-up, right? Wow. <laughs> so, um, it's just incredible. Even, like, OCR WC weekend, like, to run like a 3k 15k and then a lot of people turn around and run sometimes even like a double team race um it's just a lot of like it's a lot on your body um and the ability for some of these athletes to turn around and like compete at such a high level is pretty amazing yeah that ocrwc i think that people will and eventually if they want to do better i think the competition level is going to keep getting higher that they're just going to have to pick their race and focus on that race yeah that's what I'm waiting for like for competition to be at a level like you can't like people will start specializing yeah. um because i i know we uh, me and somebody was talking about like high rocks and they were like nobody specifically trains for high rocks i was like what do you mean nobody specifically trains for high rocks like there are people who specifically train for it, but like, even like, like you see like Lauren, Lauren Week, she does like a lot of other stuff too. She does Spartan Race, she's, um, does CrossFit. So, I mean, I guess in the grand scheme, she doesn't like specifically train for it, but she's the best. And mm -hmm. so I think there will be a point where the sport gets to like, look at CrossFit. Like I'm sure in CrossFit's like beginnings, you know, these people could just be like, they're super fit and they could go out and they could win these competitions. These people who are winning CrossFit now, these aren't like people who are just fit. These are people who train professionally to be CrossFit athletes. So I don't know that I know that there was like a maybe OCR media did a thing about like can high rocks become like a professional athlete sport or can people be a professional high rocks athlete? Um, 
because like the cash prizes and can you make enough um really from the prizes like i don't see how somebody could like make that a professional sport right now but with sponsors definitely i know ryan kent just got sponsored by rip fitness so I don't know like what his deal is, but they're a huge company. So I guess if you had enough sponsors, um, you could do it full time. But High Rocks, I think, is probably one of the hardest like sports I've trained for because there's so many like so much that goes into it, maintaining your aerobic fitness while also just having to be really strong. I don't think, like you say, I don't think that pro level is attainable right now just because the money is not enough unless you have that massive sponsor backing. But I don't think until High Rocks has a good quality video presentation, you know, be it a stream or a TV or whatever the case may be, until they have that, they won't get a good enough sponsor where, say, you know, let's take Ken, for example, until UPS is going to go, hey, Ryan, we're now going to pay you. 50 grand a year to, to do these races because it's great visual a la a NASCAR style thing, you know? So yeah. until they, until they have that great video presentation, I don't think that will happen. And that's the same problem with, with OCR, right? Until you have eyes watching it that are going to buy product, sponsors won't roll in enough. Because otherwise then they're just really looking at people's Instagram following, because if you're not getting the media from the event, then you're relying on people posting stuff. So then that's more what you're looking at. Well, they used to have this really cool, like, short course OCR stuff in, like, colleges. Um, I don't know. This was maybe, like, five or maybe more years back. Um, but they were, like, 100-meter relays. And it was on TV. Like, um, I don't know what colleges had teams, but it was super fun to watch. Um, I just think that they'd have to go to, like, a short course style to make it, like, exciting for people to watch like trials or something like that um because you know as far as spartan goes it's like i mean it's like watching a marathon it's not like a really exciting type of thing to watch for people who aren't in the sport because it's mostly just running um but you have people like climbing up like american ninja warrior style people love to watch that if you could make it more viewer friendly like even tmx a lot more fun to watch than uh, a beast, Spartan beast on TV. Yeah. And I think, again, High Rocks and DECA, both are good platforms to do that because they are they should be easy to cover and they move at a high enough pace. I think High Rocks, though, from a, a video, like a, a viewership standpoint, would actually do better if it was a half rocks and it was just, you know, half the distance, half the reps. And then- Let's what Deca is though, like, I think Deca is fun. It's fun to watch because it's so fast. Like, I mean, each station is under two minutes. So, yeah. like, you run under two minutes, you exercise under two minutes, and it goes by really quick. And there's a lot of lead changes. Like, I feel like in High Rocks, once um, you know, once the lead is established, pretty much after burpee broad jumps, there's really not a lot of like lot of play in the field. Um, especially depending, maybe there's more in like big races, like. Chicago or maybe like the world championship but you know after you get past the sleds like unless you're just like killing some wall balls and lunges you're not like really making a lot of switch ups in the lead but DECA I don't know if you watch like um like they had live coverage on Jacksonville and yep. me Chris and Lauren were like fantastic back the race. Whole race like and it was such a fun race to run too because you, you stay pretty close. I mean, you could get just destroyed by the sleds and high rocks and, like, your whole – that's what happened to me in Chicago. My whole morale is just, like, tainted. I mean, look at Megita. He quit after the sleds because, like, just mentally it can defeat you so much. Like, there's, there's really nothing like that in DECA that's going to, like, mentally break you down. It's just, like, how fast can you get through the, the, the workouts? I honestly think a DecaFit relay re properly streamed would be incredible to watch. The new pair <laughs> relay. Yeah. So, yeah, the relay is like, it was confusing to me at first, but then I, um, I like, they had it in, in Austin and it's a, it's a really big strategy. And that's what me and Dylan have been talking about with the high rocks. Like 
it's it's so much strategy on like but with deca you don't have to run together you only have to run the first and the last uh lap together so you can play with who runs you can split up the runs you can split up the station like there's so much like strategy that goes into it that i think that's what makes it fun like I'm really excited for New York. Like, I think New York's going to be a lot of fun. Maybe not as much for Dylan because he's going to be doing more work than me. But <laughs> it wasn't the strategy uh, apparently for Dylan to do everything, and you're just going to run alongside. Um, moderately, yeah. <laughs> I I do a few things. You know, I need to rest in between. He's, I mean, it's women's weight, so he should be able to do like all that, no problem. We're looking at we were looking at the stations from the world record right now. And a lot of the stations with the men's weight, he beat. So he ran just as fast as they did for the record. So, like, I think, honestly, Dylan, if he couldn't break the record by himself, he could run within 40 seconds of the record by himself. So so we talked about it. It's really just, I was like, I'm just, like, in it for the glory, you know. <laughs> you work, and I'll, uh, I'll stand up beside you. <laughs> I think honestly, though, when I heard that, when I heard that you guys, uh, I heard Dylan saying, there's no way we're doing that. We're not going to do it. But I, when I heard that, I thought you guys are seriously poked a real hole in that setup. Like, you know, uh, somebody like Dylan Hunter, Kent, somebody along that lines can just have the guy, the top notch guy run around and do all that. And all they need is someone, uh, a fast enough woman to run. So let's uh, then... like, you just need a fast runner. Like you just need yeah. a girl on a sub six minute pace for eight by 1000 like yeah, with breaks yeah. with breaks. that's what i'm saying it's like a workout like it's it's not even like a like a straight 8k like i'll get like a few minutes to break in between each station and that way i can keep that high pace and he already runs six minute pace so um that's like when i was watching um they were trying to break the record in Chicago yeah and I knew that they weren't going to do it because they were breaking up like the row like there's absolutely no reason like that you need a strong guy though like you can't have a guy that's not going to be able to do the stations just like faster by himself than if it's split mm -hmm. like like Dylan can ski a faster thousand than I could ski a, a 500 pace so it wouldn't make sense to even split it because he can row ski so fast that it just doesn't even make sense because um, I think Bracken and Callie switched like three times on the rower um, and you just like waste a lot of time there. So you need a really strong guy who can run fast. Basically, yeah, a Hunter, Kent, Dylan, Megita, Rich Ryan, and then a girl who can just keep up with the run. Now everybody's going to steal our strategy. So, oh but well, maybe we'll get the record before. <laughs> Before they, uh, they well, get that record is still good. It was fifty five or whatever it is down around there by uh, Viola and I, I can't remember the, the the guy she ran with, but yeah, the guys it's fifty five fifty one. But uh, I mean, it's still going to be tough because the the sleds just there's no way the sleds are not lighter in Europe because if you compare the times, like it's I was looking at the times with me and Lauren in Dallas and the times in um, Madrid. Mm -hmm. Me and Lauren had the fastest sled push in Dallas, and in Madrid, we would have been dead last. Yeah. So there's no way that, like, there was people who were pushing the sled, maybe not under two minutes, but right at two minutes. Oh, there, um, was, there was sub twos. In the women's heat? I think so, yeah. Okay, I knew that there was in the men's heat, because um, you just look, I mean, it's, there's just no way. <laughs> there's no way that they push the sled that much faster um in europe and it'll be interesting to see when all the european athletes come here like how different they'll perform on the sleds because i mean it's not only like that the sled takes a minute to a minute and a half longer it's the fatigue that you like endure like from pushing that sled both mentally and physically it's like the hardest station of the of the whole race and it's super early mm -hmm. um but any any European that has come over, like I, uh, you'd like to use Alex Ronkovic, who mm -hmm. when he came over, like he's recently done sub sixty, I believe, in Europe. And when he came here, he was a one hundred and nine, you know, in around that area. So I mean, it's 
it's definitely different. There's no, I don't think there's even, I don't think that even High Rocks debates it anymore. I think they, they'll admit that it's definitely different. It would, but I wonder what the difference is. Like the weight is clearly the same. I've heard like things about the poles being shorter or like the, the carpet being different. Like, I don't know. Like I'm, that's why I'm excited to go to Maastricht because I'm like, yeah, I'm going to get me a nice fast sled time uh, there. Cause that's, you know, that's where I struggle there in the wall balls. So I'm hoping that, um, but, but then you see that the, in the world championship, they still top three European men mm -hmm. are still top three. So, um, I don't guess the sled helped them that much, like it being lighter, but I think it'll affect them more being heavier. So yeah, I, I totally agree. And I think that by, by being lighter, when you're not used to it, you get there and you're still taking the same. And I saw that with the guys they were still taking the same breaks that they would if the sled was heavy because they're like, I know I need to take these breaks. Otherwise I blow up when in reality they didn't because of the way it went, but it'll still be interesting. And I think with you going over there now, you are currently sitting in a top 15 time, right? I think I'm ninth right now. Okay. So the chances of you jumping up, that'll be very interesting to see how you do there and see where that time puts you after that. Cause we had been talking earlier about, is this a, is that time thing the best way to have a qualification standard for Vegas? Because as everything's different from place to place, should it maybe be something like if you podium at a race, you qualify, you know, like that kind of deal. Yeah. I mean, I, me and Dylan have talked about this a lot and I, I totally agree because I feel like a sub 70 in America, because before Chicago, there was only three, three people. I mean, there's only been five, maybe six now with Chris six women who have broken 70 in America versus like, there's like, I guess, um, of the top 15, there has to be like at least eight or nine Europeans. So, you know, there's been way more that, and I don't think it's because the athletic talent is so much better. Um, I just think that the, the courses have to be faster. Um, even if you look at Chicago, like that course was like, awful like as far as like the rock zone like it was really long like if you look at the rocks times i mean i love i just look at these like times and stuff and compare them all like all day but like the rock zone was like one and a half minutes slower for most people than any of my races that i've had and because usually you'll be in the rock zone around three to three and a half minutes but i mean there was like rock zones closer to like five minutes there i mean it was like a hundred meter run every time you go through the zone it's like crazy that there's that much variance from race to race that's why you said like the time i just don't think is a good way to if they could standardize it better which i don't know if that's something that they're trying to do um i think the time would be fine but i just don't think it's standardized enough like decafit aside from like running one race on turf and the other ones on asphalt their course is set up that it's like the exact same every time, like, cause you always run in, run out and each lap is just a little bit short of 500 or whatever. And you, you step back on the zones. So no matter if you run it in Texas or wherever, like it's always the same. Um, so I don't know how like high rocks could like maybe reformat their race to make it more like um, standardized. Um, if they're going to go off time though, for like world championships, I feel like that's something that they need to do. It, it, DECA has done an amazing job on the standardization. Like they have been top notch and yeah. you see. And I'm proud because Spartan, I have so much beef with Spartan and their ability to standardize rules and regulations, but they have done such a good job in DECA. Um, cause Spartan beef with the burpees and like. You see people doing burpees and they're really bad and they get credit for burpees and then other races, they don't get, you know, mm -hmm. the trust, Woodsy, we trust, you know, like we'll create rules sometimes and not enforce them other times. But DECA has been really like standardized and I'm like super happy with how that, because I was pretty much done with Spartan until like Yancey started DECA Fit and was like, yeah, like I got this new event and I was like, oh, this is really cool. But I'm really like anti Spartan right now and, and mad that they don't like standardize their races. And 
that it seems like they make the race like almost unfair because they create there was like another issue with like I think it was Kent like skirting the mud and then they like or somebody like in a series right no it wasn't Kent but he skirted the mud and then they disqualified him and they re-put him in the race and then they gave him a 10 minute penalty I don't know I don't know what they're doing so was, I like and I like them to be enforced so that that, that was Mick, that was Mick Girello. he's a Canadian guy and that was up in Red Deer and yes. we, we, we played a huge part in that whole thing because uh, we were the ones who helped get the DQ turned into a, into a penalty instead of a DQ. But, so what was it? He was inside of the markers, but he, did, he didn't engage the obstacle, right? He, yeah. he went through the first two mud mounds, right? And mm -hmm. then tried to jump the third one. Yeah. He wasn't going to make it, so he took a little step on the grass and went across, but he still stayed within the tape. So they deemed that not significant engagement. Mm. yeah anyway but uh there was a whole lot of technicalities but yeah that was that was the one that happened up here that was that was a we spent a lot of time on that one <laughs> yeah. this is drama like there should just be like standardized rules because i think uh me and me and dylan were also talking about i think it's harder for the deca events to be standardized in the mile because i think there mm. was like so miscounting in one of the one of the people's races and um like they went before they finished their reps but i don't know if there's like penalties that are assessed or whatever so like but but crossfit does that i don't remember there was maybe it was that pierce girl um she like Wait, missed pierce? yeah that she like missed like two cleans or something or two snatches and she was just assessed like a penalty because her judge told her she was good and she went, but she wasn't really done. So they assessed her like a six second penalty or something like that. Like how much time would it have taken her to do those cleans? Because I mean, really, but it comes down to funding or like it comes down to money. Like Spartan is not going to have professional judges. They're going to have volunteers. And I mean, I, I'm not trying to like, um, like trash volunteers or anything like that, but they're not like trained appropriately and they don't enforce the rules properly. I know I've been at races where um, I knew Kelly Sullivan was climbing the rope and it was, this was after they made the rule. So she slid down and touched the ground and they were like, you have to do burpees, but it's a multiple attempt obstacle. So she's like standing there arguing with them. And like, while she's arguing with them, like, she just says, screw it, I'm going to do burpees, and then she missed out on a podium spot because they didn't know the rules. Yep. So, And there's been multiple, like, instances where it's, like, it's up to the athlete to know the rules, but at the same time, when somebody is telling you when you're in competition something different than what you think, like, you're going to second-guess yourself, and you shouldn't be – you shouldn't have to do that. Like, if somebody says you're good, then – that should that should just be it like you should have trained people at these stations and to make it more of a legitimate sport like so right now i i like you know waiver is even like savage too i don't mean to pick out spartan i've seen people like not take off the wristbands run past the obstacle like you know and you know i, I would hope that people would have some integrity but you know you can't just depend on people to have integrity i've seen an ocrwc like, I was stuck in an obstacle for two hours till I gave my wristband up, and I seen, like, four people just keep on going with the wristband. And, yeah. you know, I don't know how, like, you feel good about that, but at the same time, like, it's, you know, it's just gonna, it's gonna happen if, if rules aren't enforced appropriately. People are gonna cheat, so. And I think you'll find, I mean, I think CrossFit is the, you know, you say it's a great example of volunteers because there are a lot of volunteers for judging for CrossFit, right? They're not all professionals, but they, they're trained. And I think they're appropriately, you know, rewarded and stuff, but because it takes a lot of, I, th I find, I think CrossFit judging, although it's not perfect, has been really good because I see volunteer judges telling, you know, uh, you know, uh, Sigmund's daughter, no rep, no rep, you know, like, there in the, you got to have stones do that you got to be and confident the, everyone there though would still be a trained crossfit coach so yep. they would have their certification so it's not like it'd be like if every volunteer at spartan racing was an sgx coach but like which yeah. would never happen 
But the thing with Spartan is, and I've said this because I volunteer for Spartan every time I go. And it's a couple of things that make it easier. One, on the obstacle, post the rules in a little plastic sheet. There's your rules right there. There's no argument. If you don't know, it's right there. Mm -hmm. Very simple. Two, when you take, and I, I hate to say this, but I mean, I volunteered and never, ever, ever in any race I've ever volunteered at have I been walked out to the obstacle and explained the rules and how it goes there. That's, and, yeah, I volunteered, so. Um, and that's, by luck, I know them, right? Like I, cause I care and I research and I know them, but not everybody does that, right? You're taking what you can get cause you need volunteers. So you got to tell them. And that's why I think post a little note and you're like, bring them out there. Here's your obstacle. Read that. At least you know that. Or at least have like, I feel like they should have like maybe a staff, not at every obstacle, but like in these big races, they should have people who are trained like a series race. They should have like, there's only like five obstacles. Maybe, maybe people are going to fail. Right. So like, I feel like they could have like some kind of staff for all the national series races and all like the, the world championships and the North American championships. They were going in that direction. Like they had this like, thing where they had the referees and they had the referee shirts i don't know if y'all remember marshals. that the marshals yeah they don't do that anymore but they had that at uh west virginia and like they trained people to like know what to do with the obstacles and stuff like that and i don't know that was before covid so i'm sure like you know a lot has changed and they've probably lost a lot of money and maybe some of the resources for that stuff that they were trying to move towards um kind of fell off but I feel like if you want to be like considered as a legitimate sport, like you really have to get these, the semantics of like making it fair and like, you know, consistent. It's, it's so important because I just get, fr I mean, I'm frustrated with the sport because I feel like there's no fairness. Mm -hmm. So all I'm thinking about when I'm running a Spartan race is like, Oh, like, what's somebody and I shouldn't think about that like just run my own race but I'm like you know what's going on here or there and it's just it's distracting and that makes the sport not fun because you're like because yeah. at least like you win like a road race you know you win you don't think about like mm -hmm. oh what did this person do like maybe this person cheated like you just like oh I won or I lost um and that's just it same thing with high rocks like you know, you do. I mean, uh, well, I don't know. I've seen some some questionable wall balls from from yeah. some people, but I think they should make everybody use the bucket. Dylan makes fun of me for using the bucket, but then everybody <laughs> squats the same distance, and it's really easy to judge. All right, I'm going to agree and disagree at the same time. I'm totally fine with having a, a a stop point, and everybody doing the same one. It's just that bucket is too high. I mean, that's fine, yeah. but I, but if I know, but I've seen some squats that are like, like quarter squats best be getting counted in some of these videos. And I'm like, what is that? Like, so at least if I knew these people were squatting to a box or whatever they're squatting to, then, you know, you could argue it's, it's less fair for tall people or yeah, whatever. 10 foot, 10 foot thing is more fair for short people, right? Yeah, exactly. So, I, I mean, every, not everything's going to be perfect, but. I just, I, I think that when you have stuff that's like, there's a lot of like room for judgment, then it's, it's hard to be uniform. But like, but like we said, though, they do it in CrossFit, but all those people are trained CrossFit coaches. So they know what squat depth is. I even, I was even laughing because I was watching the Chicago feed and I think they were talking about Rachel and they were like, she's found a depth that is acceptable to the judge. And I was like, what does that even mean? Like, <laughs> that, like, like, oh, well, I guess like the judge is counting it. So this is low enough. I don't know. So I was bragging but, that said that part, not me. <laughs> okay. But I, I heard that and I was like, I just thought it was kind of funny because I was like, oh, so it's acceptable at this level. I didn't see her squat. She does CrossFit. So I'm sure that they're, they were they're low. Good. They're good. I, they're, I'd never seen any of like the really elite people doing like Lauren and Rachel and Corinna, like they're all like really low squatters. I have a really terrible squat. So that's why you like to use the bucket too, because I'm not trying to do any extra. I don't want to get no reps. <laughs> but 
Cause you know, you can feel like you're going like to the ground and then you watch your video and you're like, man, that's bad. <laughs> so do you run up and ask for the bucket? Um, they usually have them at every station and you can just pull it, pull it up if you want to use it. Oh. Um, Bethany, my you squat would be, be so much less low if I used it. You could be bucket. standing. <laughs> I know. <laughs> but I'm pretty, I'm pretty tall. Like, I think the bucket is actually, like, appropriate for, like, people who are, like, 5'7", five, 5'8". Five, like, it feels like about a 90-degree squat. So, I bet if you're, like, 5'3", like, I'm sure it'd be, like, maybe advantageous for you to use the bucket. But everybody can use it. So, Dylan says I'm cheating when I use the bucket. But so how I just, tall are you? 5'7". Oh, okay. But you can sit on the bucket, too, like, when you get really tired. And you <laughs> ball down so I just rest the ball in my lap and like I have my mental talk with myself I'm gonna get through like these next 80 wall balls um <laughs> so it's a good time to like contemplate life while you sit down <laughs> I like that yeah I'm totally on your side with I think the best race and the best kind of hybrid race to make uh and I mean I've, I've sent lists to Bethany before where I pick all the movements that have no judgment standards whatsoever or bordering on no judgment standards whatsoever. So there's no, did you squat far enough? There's no, did your knee hit the ground on the lunge? There's no, and by the way, that's one of my pet peeves with DECA. I like DECA and I think they've done a good job on 90% of the exercises, but the reverse lunges, I never see anybody fully extend. Like it's hard to fully extend. It like, totally is hard, but that's like, I don't you would have to like extend your hip like in an unnatural way. I think it should just, well, I, I don't know what I think, but. And that's where I'm not blaming the competitors. I blame them. Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. My bad. I was just saying somebody was giving him crap about his lunges and burpees. Um, but, I mean, I saw people in Chicago, like, not touching their knee to the ground. I mean, that's a really easy one to judge. Like, your knee touch doesn't touch. Like, you can argue if you're standing up, but you can't argue if your knee touches. Like, to me, that's just cheating. Like you can maybe think you're not go you're going low enough on a squat, but your knee touches or it doesn't touch. That's just like you're cheating. <laughs> mm -hmm. So that has always been my only complaint about the well, not my only complaint, but my biggest complaint about Deca's exercise choices is as soon as I saw reverse lunges, instantly when they came out, I'm like, those are going to be a judgment nightmare mm -hmm. because no one will stand straight up and that's exactly right it's especially on that reverse lunge with the weight it's very awkward to get into that full extended position that's why i think i think the rule should just be your feet have to come together i was thinking if you put a line on the ground uh -huh. and then so both feet so after your knee touches the ground both feet have to come back in front of that line at the same time yeah. so they have to be together in front of the line and then you can go again exactly. yeah see, I think be a better standard because like the hip extension would just be weird, like, because you're kind of naturally just leaned forward whenever you lunge anyways. So, I don't know. I think that would be a good standard. But uh, really, other than that, like, everything else in DECA is pretty easy to judge. Um, um, I can't think of any movement that really would, would be a hard thing to judge. Maybe the burp. I mean, the burpees, you just have to have it where you can see. Yeah. Like, I, I haven't seen hard. I, I don't think I can't think of a single time I've seen where that's not been good, where people were getting credit for reps where they weren't putting it out over their head. I, I haven't seen that yet. I think those are actually easier to judge than a regular burpee because mm -hmm. since you have the weight, you're going to stand up like mm -hmm. all the way. It's got to go above your head. So, I, I mean, I think that Deca has picked pretty good moves. I don't know what else they could do besides the lunges. Um, I like I like the sit up thing again. That one gets me a little bit just because not when it's on the deck of fit and you have the little target. That's cool. It's it's great, but the judging between um, when you get the ball between your feet, I've seen sometimes that be. Oh yeah, I had no reps twice this weekend, so I had to do two extra. Now yeah. I will say one thing: I'm glad. Ever down to the grit games, mm -hmm. like they have like really they're they're really strict with their judging, like. And they're, they're very on it. They have a very good community of like where they have volunteers from people with their gym and they ain't afraid to no rep you. I got no repped a lot at grit games with my burpees and stuff, but they'll be like hands didn't touch. They have like very specific standards that you have to meet. And if you don't meet them, they're like, nope. And you have to do it again. So they're pretty good as far as like the, the judging goes. Yeah. I, I think I, I, 
I agree. Like I said, it's all been good. And I loved that grip game thing. That's on the bucket list to hit. You should. But nothing about amazing things about those, their events. The only thing is just all day. So you got to bring like lots of food and water. And, but it feels like, it doesn't feel like you would think because you're there from like seven to seven, it's almost like a 12 hour event that it would be just such a long day. But I swear you're going like, it's like, you'll do your event, you'll sit down for a little bit and then you're like right back up doing another event. So it goes by fast, but man, you're whooped at the end of the day. Your grip is just like gone. <laughs> Sounds fun. It definitely does. Um, well, Beth, that's all I got for Tara for tonight. How about you? Yeah, that was great, Tara. So nice to meet you. Hopefully we'll meet you at a High Rocks or DECA sometime this year. We Y'all can coming. Get <laughs> Y'all be in Vegas? 50-50. 50-50. Boo. Yeah. Go yeah. Rock. Go Rock Games. No, the only way I'm getting down there is if they fly me down to help with coverage. By the way, I will accept if you do that. So... <laughs> Um, I do want to say one thing. Poor, so sorry. <laughs> sorry, what's that? I said I'm too poor to help with coverage. No, 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 no. I, uh, I mean, I've been, I've been, I've been petitioning to to get to get flown down to help with uh, to do ORMs coverage with them. So we'll see if that ever happens. But um, I did want to say if um, if you want to see Tara's recent deck a mile, you can go on Dylan Scott's Instagram page, and it is on there. Uh, great battle between Tara and Chris Rogalowski. Chris Rogalowski, who I always say her name wrong, as well as Dylan's run, Team OFX member Dylan Scott's uh, winning run at the deck of mile, and uh, he's got it on there as well. So thanks again, Tara. Really appreciate it. And, thanks for uh, having me. Hopefully we'll see you soon. in New York. Yep. Thanks.